Hi, so what we're going to be looking at today are steam power cycles, more specifically simple Rankine cycles. So the problem statement we have is determine the thermal efficiency of a simple Rankine cycle operating under the following conditions. Condenser exit temperature is 45 degrees C, boiler exit temperature is 4 megapascals, and maximal temperature is 500 degrees C. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a little diagram of what we're looking at over here. We have a pump that goes to a boiler, then through a turbine into a condenser. And if we look at our TS diagram, it's going to look something like this. So our point one is going to be over here. We're assuming it's uh, saturated liquid water. So we're going to put our point one. We go up to pressure at point two. We increase our temperature through the boiler to point three, and then through the turbine to point four. And we're moving in this direction. So if we put our points over here, we said point one is over here where we have our saturated liquid water, point two over here where we increase our pressure, point three right out of the boiler at our maximum temperature, and point four through our turbine. Okay, so now let's look at what's been given. They tell us that the temperature at the exit of the condenser is 45 degrees C. So the exit of the condenser is right over here at point one. So we can just write down that T1 is equal to 45 degrees C. Then they tell us that the pressure at the exit of the boiler, so right here at point three, right at the exit of the boiler, we have a pressure of four megapascals. So we can write down P3 is equal to four MPA. And finally, the last thing they tell us is that the maximal temperature is 500 degrees C. The maximal temperature is going to be right over here at the exit of the boiler. So at point three, once again, T3 is equal to 500 degrees C. What they're asking us to solve for is the thermal efficiency. So what is the thermal efficiency? The thermal efficiency, we can say, is equivalent, is equal to the work net divided by Q in. The work net is the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump. So the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump divided by Q in. The work of the turbine is going to be from point 0.3 to point 0.4. The work of the pump is from point 0.1 to point 0.2. And the Q in, or the heat added, is from point 0.2 to point 0.3. So we're going to need work of the turbine, work of the pump, Q in, to solve for the thermal efficiency. So we're just going to write them down over here. Work of the pump, work of the turbine, and finally, Q in, and this will give us our thermal efficiency. So the first thing we're going to look at is the work of the pump. As stated earlier, we're assuming that at point one, we have saturated liquid. What this means is that the quality at point one is equal to zero, meaning that the specific volume at point one is the specific volume of the fluid at 45 degrees C. This also means that the pressure at point one is equal to 9.6 kPa, which is the pressure of saturated mixture at 45 degrees C. These values you can find from your tables. Um, finally, another assumption we're going to be making is that the specific volume of one is approximately equal to the specific volume of two. And from your tables, we get that this is 1.00101 meters cubed per kilogram. Now, the work of the pump for constant volume can be written as specific volume times the change in pressure. What this means is it's the specific volume at point 1 times the pressure at point 2 minus the pressure at point 1. Now, if we look at our TS diagram over here, we see that these are constant pressure lines. What this means is that the pressure at point 2 is equal to the pressure at point 3. And we said that was 4 megapascals, or 4,000 kPa. Now, we can find our work of the pump is equal to 0 0.00101 times 4,000 minus 9.6. Units here are going to be meters cubed per kilogram times kilonewtons per meter squared. Now, if we cancel this meter squared here with this meter cubed, we get 
units that are meters, kilonewton per kilogram, and this is actually a kilojoule per kilogram. So we can do the math over here and find that the work of the pump is equal to 4.03 kilonewtons per kilogram. Now I'm going to write that over here so we can keep track of what we're solving for. And we can move on. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the heat added to the system. We can say that the heat added to the system, or Q in, is equal to the enthalpy at point 0.3 minus the enthalpy at point 0.2. We can also find from the tables that the enthalpy at point 0.3 is equal to 3,445.3 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy from your superheated vapor tables at 500 degrees C and 4 megapascals. Now we need to find the enthalpy at point 0.2. So what we can say is that the work of the pump is equal to the enthalpy at point 2 minus the enthalpy at point 1. And from the tables, we can find that the enthalpy at point 1 is equal to 188.45 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy from your saturated mixture tables at quality equal to 0 and temperature equal to 45 degrees C. So if we rework this equation over here, we get that the enthalpy at point 2 is equal to the enthalpy at point 1 plus the work of the pump. What this means is that the enthalpy at point 2 is equal to 188.45 plus 4.03, which gives us an enthalpy at point 2 of 192.45. Now we can find the heat added to the system, or Q in, is equal to 3,445.3 minus 192.45. And this gives us a heat addition of 3,252.8 kilojoules per kilogram. We're just going to note this down over here. So 3,252.8 kilojoules per kilogram, and we're going to move on. Next thing we're going to look at is the work of the turbine. So the enthalpy change from 3 to 4. We can write that the work of the turbine is equal to the enthalpy at point 3 minus the enthalpy at point 4. If you look at the TS diagram over here, you'll also notice that from 3 to 4, the change in entropy is zero, meaning that the entropy at point 3 is equal to the entropy at point 4. So what we can also say is that this entropy is equal to 7.0901 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which is equal to the entropy of superheated vapor at 4 megapascals and 500 degrees C. If we go to our saturated mixture tables, we'll see that the entropy at point 4 is smaller than the entropy of a fluid at 45 degrees C and greater than the entropy of a gas at 45 degrees C. What this means is that we have some sort of quality at point 4, a mixture of vapor and liquid. So what we can do is we can write that the quality at point 4 is equal to the entropy at point 4 minus the entropy of a fluid over the change in entropy going from fluid to gas. And we get that this is equal to 7.0901 minus 0 0.6386 divided by 7.524. This gives us a quality at point 4 of 0 0.8573. With this quality, we can find the enthalpy at point 4, which is going to be equal to the quality at point 4 times the change in enthalpy to go from fluid to gas plus the enthalpy of a fluid. This is equal to 0 0.8573 
times 2,394 plus 188.4. And this gives us an enthalpy at point four equal to 2,240.99 kilojoules per kilogram. We said that the work of the turbine is equal to H3 minus H4. We, saw, we found H3 earlier to be 3,445.3 minus the enthalpy at point 0.4, which is 2,204.99. And we can say that the work across the turbine is equal to 1,204.3 kilojoules per kilogram. We're now ready to calculate the efficiency of our simple Rankine cycle. We said the efficiency was equal to the work net divided by Q in, which was equal to the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump over Q in. If we put numbers here, which we noted down over here, we get 1,204.3 minus 4.03, so work of the turbine minus work of the pump, divided by 3,252.8, and this gives us an efficiency of 0 0.3. 369 or 36.9%. We can note that down right over here. So we can say that the efficiency is equal to 0 0.369.